We live in a world where there are new AI tools being released constantly, but so many of these tools go under the radar and aren't really noticed. So I've put together a collection of five new AI tools that are free and are relatively unknown, so you can try using them out and see if you like them. And as always, the links are down in the description below, and let's go ahead and hop right into it. So first up is this AI photo editor, which is essentially an alternative to the Photoshop generative AI feature. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't really like generate anything based off of a prompt. It's only used for removing items from a, a particular photo, but this is still a great option if you don't want to pay for Photoshop. So this is their website here. It's relatively simple. You can either drag or select a photo, but I'm just going to use one of their sample images here. So you can see it's a really simple interface. It's just the photo. You have a slider for brush size. And then when you're done, you just hit the download button. So let's go ahead and make a change. Um, like, let's just say we want to get rid of this bike on the bike rack here. So we'll just hover over that and select it. And then as soon as you release the mouse button, it'll just do its magic. And you'll see after just a few seconds, the bike is magically removed. We're still waiting on it to, to finish here, but it took 12 seconds and that bike is gone. Now it, it still has some artifacts and you know, this AI is still, you know, being worked on. But if we weren't looking at this specifically, and we're just looking at this image as a whole, we probably wouldn't be able to tell and it just does a really good job at removing things at a base level. Now, let's say, you know, we want this biker to be the focal point and we see this person over here and we're like, ah, we don't really want that person over there. We'll just decrease the size a little bit, hover over it. There we go. That person is now magically removed and I can't even tell, like I'm looking over where that person was, but I can't even tell that there was a person there. And for the finale, let's go ahead and bump up the brush size again and just try removing this person as a whole. This is gonna be a little bit more of a tricky one because there's a larger range um, to remove and it has, you know, a tree, the bits of the background, the bushes, the ground. Um, it has a lot more to remove. So let's just see how this does with it because it's going to be a little bit more hard to generate. And that one there took 32 seconds, but it did a really good job. There's just a little bit of artifact right here. But other than that, I don't see too many issues. I mean, it could have been a little bit better right here, but uh, let's just try to fix that first and foremost and, you know, just get rid of that little artifact. And then maybe we could try seeing if we can straighten this out a little bit, uh, make it look a little more natural. But other than that, it handled like this top part really well. The bushes look nice. Um, this little ledge here looks really good. So overall, this tool is doing an amazing job. And I got rid of that artifact and then we'll just go like that, I guess, and then see if it'll straighten out the line a little bit. Now that didn't do too much, but I think it still looks pretty good. So when you're done, you just hit the download button and then they do have a pro where you can download like higher end images. But if you're going to pay for pro, you might as well just get the Photoshop. But this is good for just sort of like low level. Like if you're doing something basic for Instagram, it'll be great and it's free. So then you just click the download button and save it to your system. Now this next tool is called chat NBX, and this is essentially a chat GPT alternative, which uses the llama model. Now the unique thing about this is it doesn't just use the llama. You can also use uh, like the chat GPT models as well. And they have other versions of different models. And as other models are created, they will likely add support here. And it looks like you can upload your own model as well. So this sort of just adds a chat GPT like interface to all of your custom models or the llama or whatever. And you can see that it offers, you know, a lot of the same kind of features. You know, it has, you know, the standard like chat box, and then it has a history, and then it has like the theme switcher. Um, so just overall, great option to use llama with. So to test out this model, let's just go ahead and do this one here. Describe generative AI to a 10 year old, and then it'll just, you know, do it. Llama is really interesting because it sounds a lot different from ChatGPT. ChatGPT still tries to maintain a professional image, but this one, you know, when you ask it to describe it, it, it words it as if it's talking to a 10 year old. So <laughs> it's just funny, like, hey there, little buddy. So 
Yeah. And then it uses emojis, which ChatGPT does not use. So it has its own little quirkiness to it, which you might even just like better than ChatGPT. So definitely go ahead and give this a try if you know you just want to try out a different alternative to ChatGPT. Now this next tool is called CSV GPT. And essentially what this does is it allows you to upload a CSV file and sort of ask it questions about that CSV file. Now, the great thing about this tool in particular is that it's free and open source. So you don't really have to, you know, mess with it. There are other like paid options, but this is just a great free alternative. So to use this tool, we're just going to click the try now from their homepage and then it'll open up the little interface and it's a very simple interface so just go ahead and drag and drop your file here it's going to upload and then once the file has uploaded then you're just going to ask a query now for reference here here is the csv file that i went and uploaded and it's just a sample csv file um, that i downloaded on the internet which is just a list of sample customers to practice using i guess in this case excel tools but we're going to use it to sample this ai tool so we can see that there's a lot of different customers here and the list is quite long. So maybe we'll just go ahead and ask um, this AI how many customers there are. So once we have our input, then we just hit analyze now and then we'll see it, it analyzed it and it is 10,000. And if we go back to the list and scroll all the way down, oh, hey, look at that. It ends at 10,000. So that was correct. So with 10,000 different names, surely there's going to be some repeats. So let's go ahead and ask it, you know, what are the most common names used on this list? So once we get our question, analyze now, and then it'll spit back an answer for us, hopefully. And it said the most common name on this list was Dunlap. Now, I am curious because I, I haven't ever heard that as a first name before. Um, so I guess that's taking it from. OK, well, there it's used as a first name. Interesting. I guess it used first and last name. Let's let's do a first name. So I wonder what it'll say if it will be able to tell Greg. OK, that's pretty cool. So I guess it, it knew that this was the first name pile. Or, oh wait, oh, okay, I see what happened there. So this, these two, so it was taking company name as well as last name. There weren't any first names of that previous name. So we had to specify first name and then it'll pull only from this pile. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that it was also taking into account company name. So I guess that just tells you, you gotta be specific. And as a final question, let's just ask how many customers are from Norway. And then let's see how many customers there are from Norway. Cause that first one was from Norway. 51 customers out of 10,000. That's, that's pretty good. Now this next AI tool is called debateai.org and it is quite a fun one. So essentially this is just like an AI chatbot, but specifically only for debates. Now this could be used if you're wanting to like debate against a chatbot to see like what the other arguments would be and like to try to win. Or you can use this like if you're taking a debate class and you're trying to come up with arguments, maybe, you know, you can ask this and see what, you know, your opponents might respond with, or, you know, if you're debating someone online, who knows, but it's a quite interesting tool. So let's go ahead and just use the debate topic is a hot dog a sandwich. And then once you have your topic inputted, then you hit next and then it'll ask you to choose a persona that you want this person like your chatbot to take on. So I'm just going to randomize and sure we can do Abraham Lincoln, I guess. And then you hit let's debate and then you are presented with this screen. It's a very simple interface and you can see the title of, you know, what you're discussing. So debating is a hot dog, a sandwich with Abraham Lincoln, which is quite an interesting sentence. And I don't think anyone has ever said before. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the AI, you know, take a stance. Let, let, let's see what Abraham Lincoln thinks on this age old debate. So I'm just going to click the let the AI start the debate and then it'll just send a message. And then you can sort of see with these two messages, how the layout of this works. It's just like a chat message. So it looks like Abraham Lincoln is taking the stance that a hot dog is not considered a sandwich. So now what you can do is you can respond and I've already typed out a message here, or you can have the AI respond for you, which I'll demonstrate here in a second. And the reason you'd want to maybe let the AI respond for you is if you just want to see the two sides of the debate and then see what two 
um, I guess, intellectual chatbots are going to say about the debate. But since Abraham Lincoln here is saying that the hot dog is not a sandwich because, you know, the bun is like all part of one and it's not cut and stuff like that. I'm going to say, what about a croissant sandwich? Because croissant sandwiches are usually cut from the side. Oh, I said size. Um, and not they're not always cut all the way through. So sometimes, you know, the croissant or, you know, whatever other sandwich that's sort of like a croissant um, is cut, you know, it'll just, it'll be a whole like bun, but it'll still be able to put stuff in it. So let's just go ahead and see what Abraham Lincoln says. <laughs> okay. So um, they're still arguing that, you know, it's, it's not then, you know, with this do you know, debate, they're responding to it and, you know, still affirming their um, beliefs, I guess. And then let's just go ahead and let the AI respond for me um, and see how they continue on the debate. And then once mine got sent through, the um, the other, the Abraham Lincoln AI went ahead <laughs> and responded. Um, so just overall, a pretty fun way to just have a debate. And, you know, if you're in a debate with your friends and you need someone and you want some reassurance that you are correct, just hop on here and see what the AI has to think. And finally, our last AI is Domain Hunt AI. Now what this does is it allows you to come up with a domain name based off of a description of your business. So sort of taking inspiration off of the debate one, let's go ahead and incorporate hot dogs in with this um, startup idea. So I'm thinking we have a virtual vending machine that serves hot dogs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and input that in here. And once you input your brief little prompt here, you click generate and it'll find a domain name, AKA a website URL um, for your startup. And I don't know how many virtual vending hot dog machines there are. Um, so hot dog vending online, virtual dog vend, <laughs> e-hot dog vendor. Actually, I kind of like that one, e-hot dog vendor. Um, and then over here on the right, it'll say if the website is available for purchase or not. Um, and sometimes, you know, if it's a more like popular kind of URL, it might not be available. So this just offers a quick little check to see like, okay, can I use ehotdogvendor.com? And if we go ahead and search it up, it can't be reached. So that must mean that it is available for sale. And I am kind of curious, uh, how much is this domain name? It's $12 a year. All right, if you want ehotdogvendor.com, 12 bucks a year, it can be yours. This is gonna be the next million dollar business. I can already tell it. So yeah, if you're thinking of doing a startup business and you know, you're know you just wanting to get some ideas of like what a URL would look like, definitely come check out this website because these are actually some pretty good suggestions. I know when I've tried to do stuff like this, like the suggestions they gave were terrible, um, but I actually like the like virtual hot dog machine. Like that sounds amazing. Like that's that's the perfect URL. I mean, it's a little long, but it's still great. But yeah, that has been five unique AI tools that aren't really talked about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, and comment. What was your favorite AI tool? And to discover more unique AI tools like this, check out our website at ai-search.io.